Hey everyone, it's Melanie Ham, and in today's video I'm going to show you two different ways to attach crocheted items to fabric. Okay, so we're going to talk about my two favorite ways to do that and some tips and tricks along the way and tools that will be helpful to you. So no matter what project you are doing, whether you want to back a blanket, you want to line a bag or a hat or a scarf, these are gonna be the best ways that you can do that to get the best finished result. So the first thing is having some sort of a tool to help you push through the sewing machine. So um, this is a stiletto. It has this long point to grab it and push it through the machine. The other thing that you could use is a chopstick or a seam ripper to help you you know, you'll, you could push it onto the crochet and help glide it through. Okay, so track with me here for a second. The fabric is a woven material and there is no stretch to it. The crochet is obviously very stretchy. So that is the trickiest thing about adding these two different fibers together. When you have the crocheted piece, um, I added a single crochet border all the way around this granny square to give it something to grip onto. So if your piece is very lacy, you need to have that, you know, added onto it. The sewing machine has to have something to grip onto as it's going through the machine. Otherwise you'll have to add it by hand. Same with this. I added a single crochet border. The other thing that will be helpful is parchment paper, but parchment paper is going to allow us to send the crochet item on top of the feed dogs through the sewing machine um, and allow, you know, make sure that the crochet, the yarn doesn't get stuck in your sewing machine. The other thing is these feet. And I like these two feet. This is a smooth foot and this is the standard foot for my machine because it has a wide foot, but it's mostly solid. So this one does have kind of the groove here in the middle. Um, but it's more solid, so it's going to keep everything kind of pressed underneath there a little bit better, as opposed to an open foot. So see, this is an open foot, and this is just asking for trouble when you're sewing anything crocheted because these feet can get stuck in your crochet as you're sewing down. So something more solid will be helpful. So let's discuss the first way I'm going to add the fabric to my crocheted piece. Now my fabric is prepped. So we have all of our edges finished. There's not gonna be any fraying. We can wash this piece. So we are gonna have the right side of our crochet piece facing up so that then the right side is on the back. That way we're not sewing anything blindly and we can see exactly where our needle is going. Okay, so prep prep anything that you have and then I'm going to use clover clips and pin these together or clip these together. You can use pins if you would like to, but line everything up and clip it in place. A few things I want you to notice, everything is clipped. Nothing is stretching or pulling, okay? My fabric is laying nice and straight and flat. My crochet piece is laying nice and straight and flat. If your crochet piece needs any blocking, that should be done before you add your fabric because that's gonna change the size and shape of that crochet piece. So that needs to be done first. It's really easy to just sort of stretch the crochet piece into place and clip it. But what that will do is pull on the fabric. So you really want everything to be laying nicely, straightly with no pulling, okay? That's going to really be helpful. Okay, so the first thing we're going to do is we're going to start sewing from the top along. We need to stitch, we need to bump up our stitch length. So I'm going to bump mine up to a three and a half. I am going to sew in between the V's. You can also go on this side of the V's. It needs to be secure. It needs to be close to the edge so that it has a nice look. And it also, um, needs to be consistent throughout your entire project. Okay, so right in between. So it can go right in between here or on the other side of this stitch, up to you. Go slow. If you need to bump up your stitch length even more, you can see how it's going, but you, we don't want our crochet to stretch really at all. 
Okay, so we can back stitch at the beginning. Keep an eye on your presser foot because even if you have a smooth or a wide presser foot without any big holes, you could still get things caught. So um, keep an eye on that. If your pressure on your presser foot is too strong and it's flattening it too much, you can ease that up. Check your sewing machine manual for how you would do that on your specific machine. Feel free to stop, make any adjustments. We are sewing this, we can see exactly where our needle's going down. We can see exactly where the press of foot's running across. We can see what's going on here. So we wanna make sure that our stitch is looking nice. Also, use this is where you would use your stiletto or your chopstick or whatever, is you can help to sort of guide those stitches into place as we sew around. Okay, so this is a really helpful tool for that as well to make sure we're kind of scooching things under there in order to not have any stretch happen in the top layer. Now I'm at the corner. We can lift up the presser foot and pivot. You will, I'm using white because that's what I already had on my machine, um, but you would want to use a coordinating thread for your top and back piece. So we'll take a look at how everything looks afterwards. There's no stretching, pulling, everything is attached really nicely. Let me show you the other method and then we can go take a closer look at how all of these look over at the work table. But that is method number one. Now method number two is gonna be using the parchment paper. Now um, track with me here again. If you are using a sewing machine and you try out that method and you just, you really having trouble with your uh, crochet item stretching. I'm just really having trouble with that. The two things to keep in mind are your foot and also the pressure in which your foot is going down. So you can lighten that with your sewing machine uh, manually. You could check that. The other thing is the feed dogs do a better job of pushing your items through the sewing machine than the top. Most walking foots have a nice wide open foot, which is why I'm not recommending a walking foot for this because it's just asking, it's like more parts that are asking to get stuck in your crochet. So I don't really want you to use a walking foot. But if you flip this around and you put your crochet on your feed dogs, there's a huge chance it's gonna get stuck in there. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna have the parchment paper go first and then the crochet item and then we'll be looking at our fabric on the top that does mean that we are going to be sewing blind so we are going to be relying on the width of our fabric or with the width of our presser foot and our and our pinning or our clipping to make sure that everything is staying in line so with this method put your crochet item down underneath 
a strip of parchment paper. This is just standard parchment paper that I got in, out of my kitchen. Nothing fancy. And you don't need to really line up the parchment paper. Um, don't be specific about that. We're gonna be using our top fabric as our guide. And actually you don't really even need to clip the parchment paper. You can just slide that underneath if it's just a little too squirrely. The two biggest things are to clip these two together. All right, we are clipped. So again, we're gonna be placing our, and, and we have our right side facing up and our right side facing out. So we're still not gonna be flipping anything. We're just gonna be placing our crochet side down as we feed it through the machine. Okay, so I'm gonna use the side here get a little closer. I'm going to be using the side of my purple fabric as my guide. Okay. And you can kind of take a look at where that's going to be. I'm just going to use the width of my presser foot. So I'm going to follow along with this side. So just kind of see where that is going to be. You can change your needle position if you need to. And then we are going to slide our parchment paper under here. I like to start in the middle of one of the sides rather than on the corner. I also eased up the pressure on my presser foot and I'm gonna use this side and we're gonna keep our stitch length bumped up to the three and a half and we are just gonna sew down. Um, still go slow, but our feed dogs are gonna do a little bit better job of pushing that fabric through. So let's see how it goes. my left hand to kind of help pull it through on the other side. Um, you can also use your stiletto or your chopstick and help you do that as well. Let's go back over to the work table and take a look at how these two worked out and I'll show you how to take off the parchment paper. Okay, so there's the front. Obviously you can't see much there. Here's the back. So this is the part we can't see very well. And you can see there's, a, you know, it gets a little skinny right here. Overall though, especially if this is your front side, I feel like this looks really nice. This is my favorite way of doing it. But this way is also um, good, especially for certain types of sewing machines. Um, it's a little squirrelier. And the way that you take this off is you just gently rip it. So here is how it looks. This is a really great way as well. You can see everything's laying flat. You can see our stitches on the side here look really nice. You can do this one really quickly as well. Um, because you're not as worried about fussing with it, you can kind of zip through it. If you've got a specific project, you, can, you know how, exactly how to line it up. You can just zoom right through it. This one, you can see the back here. The distance from the side is a little bit larger on this one. And I, I came in a little bit here. Overall, both of these are great methods for attaching your crocheted items to your fabric using your sewing machine. We've got this way with just going from the top with our wide foot, our up stitch length, and this side using our parchment paper. I recommend playing around with this on your sewing machine with some crochet samples like these or some little spare pieces you have laying around and see what's going to work, work best for you. How does your brain comprehend it the best? How does your machine handle it? Those are going to be the things that will really um, be able to tell you exactly how you'll do this in the, and give you the best results.
I hope you found this helpful. If you did, please give this video a thumbs up and leave me a comment down below telling me what you think your favorite method is and what you will be using in the future. I would also love to know what types of projects you plan to use this feature on. Over on my blog, melaniekham.com, I'll put the link right here. You can uh, download a free PDF. So I'll have a PDF over there with the little cheat sheet that you can print out and put in your sewing room just for the next time you wanna refer to these instructions. I'll have everything listed out and some little bullet points, just a little quick reminders of the ways that you can utilize this technique. Thank you guys so much for watching. I'll see you in the next video. Bye.